Now what we're going to do is really finally, we're actually going to use Gauss's law for something that it's really useful for. Find the electric field outside a uniformly charged sphere. Here is a uniformly charged sphere. This is actually, this is a sphere, uh, and it's got charge Q. And so that, by uniformly charged, I mean the charges are like completely even within the whole thing. It's everywhere the, uh, the density, what we call the charge density, and we use the symbol rho, where we used it last semester for the mass density, this is what we're going to use for the charge density now. And guess what units this will be in? Well, what's the, what are, what's the units of mass density, our normal density? Kilograms per, per meter cubed. Uh, this will be uh, in coulombs per cubic meter. So that, that rho, and, and this is kind of like some review from last semester, we get to do all kinds of integrations with using rho, the charge density, where we were formerly using mass density. Let's say I want to figure out a field at some point, I don't know, let's say r away from the center. Um, what kind of Gaussian surface, and again, the Gaussian surface, there's nothing there. We're just constructing a, some geometry there. What do you suppose would be the Gaussian type of surface I'd want to use to figure out the field out there? It's another sphere, uh, and it's uh, just a sphere of radius r. So just around that. Now, this is actually the exact same thing we did before, such that we have, you know, e dot dA is equal to Q in over epsilon naught. There's Gauss's law. Uh, the Q in is just, pot, you know, capital Q. It's the same everywhere. We get to do all the same arguments. We're just going to find the exact same thing, that the field is just going to be, just take, just look at the notes from before. It's exactly the same thing. It will be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times, this will be capital Q now, because there's a total charge of Q in that Gaussian sphere over R squared. Uh, it's exactly the same field as before. Okay, Gauss's law would show us that too. Here is where it gets interesting. I want to figure out the field inside this charge sphere. Let's do that. So I'm going to redraw this whole thing so we can take another look at it. I've got, again, my Q, my uniformly charged sphere. It's got charge Q. It's got a uniform density everywhere of rho is the density everywhere throughout that. So we want to figure out E at, if this is radius r, if that's a radius r, I want to figure out e at r less than r. I want to figure it out here. And again, I put my Gaussian surface where I want to find that field. So I'm going to get rid of this r, so I just don't have to look at it anymore. It is a radius r. That's going to be important later. but. Uh, I want to figure it out at this r, an arbitrary r inside. What is the field strength inside this? Now that would be just a mess trying to use it with Coulomb's law. It would just be horrible. I wouldn't, you know, it'd be hard to figure out where to start. You'd have to add up all the charges inside and outside, and what the heck? That would be just a that'd be very difficult. So it's easy with Gauss's law. This is why we use Gauss's law, because it's easy. So all I do is I write out Gauss's law, which is uh, the integral of a closed surface. And again, my surface is just a geometrical surface with that dotted line. E dot dA equals Q in over epsilon naught. Now, just be, if this is a uniform, uh, uniformly charged sphere, the charge is the same density everywhere, uh, what do you know about the Q in? the charge inside this dotted line here, within that Gaussian sphere. What do you know, just, I mean, it's just basically conceptually, how does it compare to big Q? Smaller amount than big Q. So that's the Q in that we want. What's the charge within this dotted line right there? I.e. within our Gaussian surface. First of all, 
what can you argue? And this is, of course, my picture is not so you know uniform, but assuming I could draw a perfect circle there, what do you know about the field at every point on this Gaussian surface? What can you argue? It's the same magnitude everywhere on that surface. How do you argue that? Well, by symmetry, no matter where you stand on this surface, it looks the same. The situation looks the same no matter where you're standing on this surface. Stand there, you stand there, it looks the same. So that means that the field must be the same everywhere. And the only way it can be the same everywhere is if the field points directly outward from the center. Because notice that, so in other words, our field, which I'll again do in red here, the field's got to point outward. How do I know that? That is the only possible way that it could look the same everywhere. It's got to point out, because if it were like sometimes sideways, that wouldn't look the same everywhere. It's got to point out. And my little DA vector, here's my little DA, there's my area and my DA vector. So we can argue that E field, which I put in red there, the E field vectors and the DA vectors are parallel, what do I get to do with this E, D, E dot D, A if they're parallel? I get to get rid of that dot product and just make it E, D, A. So again, I get to make this simple. Uh, this is just becomes E, D, A equals Q in over epsilon naught. And then because E has got to be the same everywhere because it's, it's by symmetry, what do I get to do with this E inside the integral? Take it out and you will always take it out. So this is going to be equal to E times the integral of D, A and that is equal to Q in over epsilon naught. And again, easy, the integral of dA. Now here's where common mistakes start to happen. Is the, well, it's the area of, certainly area of a sphere, is it choice one, the area of my Gaussian surface, when I integrate dA, or is it the area of my charged object, which would be, uh, you haven't used the big R. Gaussian surface area, pi R, pi, uh, four pi little r squared, choice one, or, 4 pi big R squared, that dA is just part of the Gaussian surface. So this is just going to become E times 4 pi little r squared. And that's when big R is way out to there. We don't want to have that there. Q in over epsilon naught. Now, the hard math, it's not going to be so hard in this situation, is what is Q in? We got to figure out what Q in is. That's really the tough part. So again, what I end up with, this is the easy part, uh, I get E field will be Q in over uh, four, one, I can, uh, 4 pi epsilon naught r squared, same as before, but what I gotta do is I gotta figure out what the heck that Q in is. And to start with, all I gotta do is figure out an expression for what is rho. What is rho in this situation? Hint, the entire charge is capital Q. What's the entire volume of this actual charged sphere? 4 pi, that's the, sorry, that's the area. 4 thirds pi big R to what power? Cubed. So, uh, Rho is going to be this. Rho is going to equal big Q. I'll try to use the red to make it make uh, be consistent. It's our big Q over the volume. That is capital V for volume. And that will be capital Q over 4 thirds pi big R cubed. That's what Rho is. Now, because this is a, a uniformly charged sphere, we don't have to do any complex integrations on this side. By the way, this is the side over here that you're, if you're doing any tough integrations, it's on that side because we got to figure out what Q in is. Um, all we got to do is this. We got rho. What is going to be the Q in? In other words, the Q inside just this part right there. What is Q in right there? Rho is Q over the volume of the sphere, it's the entire sphere, that's the charged sphere, not the Gaussian sphere, it's the charged sphere. 
Um, how are you going to figure out the amount of charge within? It is the uh, hint. It's rho, the, the Q in, is equal to the rho times the volume of what? The Gaussian sphere times the volume of the Gaussian sphere. So that's just going to be rho times 4 thirds pi times what now? Little r cubed. So let's put it all together. That means that our E field is, here's the punchline, it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, which is just your k coulomb constant, times q in, which is this whole mess, 4 thirds pi r cubed times rho. So it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. And for rho, I'm basically just taking this thing right here. Rho, uh, and I'm going to also put it over r squared here. How do I write out rho? Rho is itself, this rho is q over 4 thirds pi big R cubed. Hey, we're going to get some really nice cancellations here. Uh, what's What cancels out? Four thirds gone. What else? Pi gone. Uh, and then we're going to, we got to be careful here. Uh, I'm going to, well, we can, in fact, what do we do with this R cubed and this R squared? We can cancel that and only leave R. Here's what we're left with. We are left with the electric field, and this is the bottom line of this thing. The electric field is equal to the Coulomb constant, or 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, times what's left is uh, R over Q, or R times Q, rather, big Q, over R cubed. I'm going to just rewrite it like this. Uh, this is equal to K Q over R cubed, which is a constant, right? That's just the, the uh, radius of our charged sphere, times R. Check it out. This is our electric field. Notice, what's the only variable in here? The only thing that can change. This little r, I'm, I can go out to different uh, distances. So here's what this means. If I graph the electric field versus the radius out from the center, r, at 0, uh, what's, what is the, uh, at this point, r is 0. What's the electric field at the center of this whole thing? Let's take a look at this thing again. This uh, right here is what we're, this thing. What's the field at the center of it? Zero. It's zero field center. It goes up as, as R goes up, what does this shape look like? What does the graph look like? It's a linear graph as I go out, and then when I get to R equals R, like the big R, it's linear, when I get to there, what does it look like after that? Hint, kq over r squared, it's an inverse square law. It goes down as 1 over r squared. This, this part is linear. This part goes down as 1 over r squared goes down. And, and as the r gets bigger and bigger, this gets you know closer and closer to 0. So that is an amazing uh, result that we got. Uh, from Gauss's law.